I've already got my wax setup done. We already had it processed a, a wax up beforehand. We selected some teeth. These are the Korea Pearl teeth. I think you can see why I like them so much. They've actually got colors built in to them just like natural dentition. We've given the lab what we feel like is a pretty good position. If you measure this tooth, you're going to get a measurement of right at 11, 11 millimeters. They've taken the time to really pretty up the wax, which is a really nice thing to be able to show a patient. If I measure the width of the six anteriors, we write it 50, and I think our original measurement was 51. Um, I think we, uh, we slip this in, in Jim's mouth and take a look. We changed out the laterals a little bit. We altered the shape of them. That's one of the nice things about a Creole Pearl tooth is you can change the shape of it without losing the color. Say 55 for me now. 55. Yep. Look up at Dennis and say 55. 55. 66. 66. <laughs> he can say 66 without his teeth. Raise your lip up as high as you can. As you can see, he shows just a little bit of pink across the top. Let's check his midline. Mighty good. Mighty good. I don't even need the thing. Let's make sure that uh, we have the posterior teeth in there. We can use our fox plane to make sure that our plane of occlusion is level. I think that's critically important. Then we can slip these lowers in there. I'm going to let Jim find them for a second. There you go. Now, count from 1 to 10 for me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What's amazing to me is when you actually get the teeth in there and you have the actual shape too, listen to how much better his 66 sound is. 66. 66. Hear the whistle? Um, let's, 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 have, um, let's have your glasses. Yeah, and let's read the poem. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Pretty good. I, hear, I heard a lot of good things. I heard good, my son, uh, if you can fill the unforgiving minute. Uh, did you feel like you were struggling at all with that one? No. Really? No. Uh, so it felt, felt much, much better and easier. Yeah. These are mine, aren't they? No, no. That's the wax triad. Is it? Those aren't yours. <laughs> oh, excellent. Hey, so I hope you got that picture when he laughed. Uh, you can see that he's got a really good uh, lip support, and I think that comes back to that wax rim and, and getting the necks of the teeth right. Um, what was great to hear him say, he thought that was his denture, yeah. and it's actually the wax triad that, that, that we're doing. Um, and then we even changed the teeth out. We didn't use the same teeth that we used in your denture. No, we don't. Yeah, yeah. And so I take a, not a whole lot of time at the wax trying unless I gotta move things. If I gotta move something, then I'm gonna move it right now. And here's the way I would move teeth. If they were too long, we'd give him a hand mirror. And if I felt like we needed to move it, the patient thought they were too far out. And that's the biggest problem you're going to have with this technique is you're going to get the teeth too far out and the patients will tell you I have buck teeth. They're sticking out too far. They show too much. One of the things I'll tell you is be a little careful moving them too far back because I know that with veneers and when we're lengthening teeth that the neutral zone is compressive and a patient can adapt back where they originally were before they lost all of that support. And so I would encourage them to, to not move them too far back. Now, if they're just plain sticking out, uh, you, you do need to move them. If you had to move them for speech reasons, and here's how I would move them. Only move one side. Only move half. A patient can tell you uh, if, if, if one side is, is right or wrong. It's very amazing. So just move one side, because by moving one side, you have preserved your mistake, and you can get back if you want to. It's like a compass reading at the car. And so just move one side, ask them how it feels, 
How does that look? If they say go with it, then move the other side back. Or you could just have the lab move the other side. I was talking to Brantley this morning from the lab, and he said, just move the two centrals back, and we'll correct everything else. And that's, that's really a good way of looking at it, too, because then, see, then when you're doing it, you're going right back to that initial two teeth set to an S clearance. And so having the wax try-in stage is an excellent way to kind of set the hook on a patient, let them know that here's what it's going to look like, here's what it's going to feel like. One other thing I want you to be able to do at your wax try-in is I'm going to have you put your head back for me now. Open just a little bit. And let's let your jaw just relax. Gently close, close, close. Come on up, come on up. And as you can see, he's on his wax rims back here. Open just a little bit. Hmm. Got it stuck, didn't I? Open for me. Now let me show you. In our wax rims, there are little indentations for the upper lingual cusp. And one of the things we've learned is the lingual control line goes from the eye tooth or the canine back to the lingual of the retromolar pad and goes from the mesial point angle of the canine to the buckle of the retromolar pad. And it's that little triangle right there that the upper lingual cusp are set in. Same thing on this side. From the mesial point angle of the canine back to the lingual of the retromolar pad and then from the mesial point angle to the buckle of the retromolar pad is where the lingual cusp of the upper teeth must go. If when you load tested and closed Mr. Bothy up, you had a huge prematurity someplace and the denture was skating everywhere and the front teeth were not coming together right, go ahead, cut the wax down and take another bite record. This is a perfect time to remount. Because what the lab's going to use this for is to fabricate the approved provisional denture, the denture that we're going to place hydrocast in. So now's your chance to verify everything. So I'm going to put just a tiny bit of sticking. I can load his joint up, close him straight up, and he's right on the money. Okay? One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I feel real good about that. 66 sales. Uh, I feel real good about that. So our next appointment, what we'll do is we will insert the diagnostic denture or the approved provisional denture. Okay? Right. Great. Okay.